Greetings, YouTube. Today we're looking at Better Than Human, um, The Promise and Perils of Enhancing Ourselves by Alan Buchanan. Now, in case uh, there are any new subscribers here, let me tell you up front, I'm a, uh, a transhumanist. I believe that humanity should be doing everything in its powers to go beyond our biological limitations. And I endorse people being able to change themselves either cybernetically or biologically as they choose. Um, there uh, should definitely be standards in place in case they're going to be trying to change a germ plasma, um, but if they're going to just be changing themselves, as long as they are not making themselves in, in, into a situation where they cannot can take care of themselves, they're not attempting to intentionally handicap themselves. For example, people that want to lop off their own limbs and not replace them with anything, that may be an issue. But people who want to modify and improve their bodies, enhance them um, beyond just you know alleviating medical limitations, um, I think they should be allowed to do so. And s long story short, even though this isn't a particularly big book, um, we should look at that a whole lot more deeply and uh, with the far more open eyes than we have been looking at them. Now, as again, this isn't a big book, it's not very thick. It is, however, a very dense book. This took me longer than I thought it was going to read because there's a lot in there to chew on. Um, because there seem to be a whole lot of assumptions when it comes to dealing with this topic. For example, out of the gate, people say, um, the promise and perils of enhancing ourselves. Oh, you want to enhance ourselves, that's wrong. So before we can get into the conversation, the very idea of enhancing ourselves shuts them off. But in reality, we have been doing enhancements of humanity for as long as humanity has existed. I mean, the most obvious one is the one staring at you in the face at the moment. That's what I'm wearing on my face. That's an enhancement. That is counterbalancing a natural deficit. With any luck, it brings me up to the same level as someone who has perfect vision. Now, that's, that's a very slight enhancement because you're alleviating a medical condition. My eyesight is not 2020. However, with some of the, and the author discusses this in, on, on a personal level, uh, with some of the laser surgery available now, you can actually exceed 2020 vision. So it is a true enhancement. Of course, your vision will deteriorate as you get older and eventually work its way back to 2020 and probably eventually lower than that as you get really old. Um, but as our improvements in this technology increase, we'll get better and better at having those enhancements be longer lasting, potentially permanent without any degradation. Um, another uh, um, deal breaker for some people is the fact that we discuss it's a biological enhancement. Well, I have some news for you folks, so is cooking. Cooking has made a selection of foods available to humanity that we would not have if we had and did not have the ability to cook, there would be entire classes of foods that we could not properly consume on a daily basis. But the fact that we can, but no one thinks of cooking as an enhancement. No one thinks of reading as an enhancement, but it is. The ability to read means that I can put things down here on these little thin slices of tree that I don't have to remember in my head. That I can now have headspace for other things. And then I can pass this head this on to the next generation in total. I could give this to my nephews in 10, 10 years from now and they could pass it on to their kids and they could pass it on their kids and the words are going to be exactly the same as opposed to having to try to memorize this book and then pass it down from word of mouth, literally word of mouth, and hope that it didn't drift over time until it ended up as an incredibly long, slow process of playing telephone, and the message at the end isn't the message at the beginning. Reading is a technical enhancement. It was a major breakthrough for humanity. Yes, there are very few people that can quote the Iliad from uh, memory, but then again, we don't have to. There are people that can quote the entire Quran from memory, which is an incredible feat of memory. And I have nothing but respect for someone that, can, that, that was willing to dedicate themselves 
to that degree of, of, of educational rigor. But we don't have to do it. There was a time when you did. That's an enhancement. Now, again, I support the whole idea that we should be able to change ourselves biologically and that we should be doing these things. Um, the fact that, you know, the, when this was written, that with the, with the big controversy was the Bush administration not wanting to, uh, to uh, support stem cell research. And stem cells, is a, in a nutshell, essentially, a stem cell is a cell that has not differentiated itself into specific organs. And because of that, it's kind of a Lego toolkit. And if we had a better understanding of it, the idea is you could take a stem cell, then you could make a stem cell into anything you wanted to be to be to help people heal um, diseases and injuries and things that they can't now. In a nutshell, that's what that's what stem cell wants to do. It wants to take this cool little pre specification uh, specialization cells and then turn them into things that we need biologically. And the big controversy: oh, they could turn into people. So, remember, I'm pro-choice, and I don't put any great attachment to a bunch of cells that aren't a human yet. They are human, they are not a human being yet. A stem cell is a human cell, it is not a human being. And of course the big ball of crap involved in this is that most of the stem cells that they are not used in research either are incinerated or flushed down the drain. That's not a figurative. I'm not, I'm not saying that they are figuratively flushed down the drain. Some of them are literally flushed down the drain. And yet, they are sacred! They're not sacred. They're, bio, they're a biohazard if we don't use them. They're a biological waste if we don't use them. So why aren't we using them? And that's still a controversy. Um, we need more research, and the reality is that the places that don't have these kind of limitations will eventually get a leg up on the places that do. And that's one of the things that, that this book really addresses. That if we don't have a coherent system of regulations and guidelines, and we start dealing with these things in in the front door, there are places where there are gonna, aren't going to be any regulations, and that's where the true horror stories are going to come from. The author touches on Ritalin, for example. Ritalin is ADHD drug to help people who have thought processes that, run, that, 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 are, that are running away from them, and the Ritalin helps to concentrate and let them focus. Well, some people are using it as a concentration drug who don't have HDHD, who use it to help focus them in their minds for studying and for getting an edge academically on other people. But that's a backdoor process. They're not using it this way because it's never been tested. It's never been authorized to be used this way. But people have found that if those who don't have HDHD, I probably said that wrong, I apologize, um, use this, it can focus their minds and help them study. So that's a backdoor enhancement. There's no regulation on backdoor enhancements. So let's be doing this in a logical way and start doing things proactively as opposed to reactively and have some open discussions, some good research, some and, and some proper understanding of how these things could have ramifications that we don't necessarily um, grasp through a backdoor process. For example, interaction with other drugs, interaction with people who don't have the condition and how they might potentially harm them down the line, that kind of thing. So we need to have this conversation honestly and openly we need to get the emotional hyperbole out the window just because it's enhancement doesn't make it bad just because it biologically biological doesn't make it bad we need to have these conversations and the social conservatives are standing in the way of progress what a shock so if you are interested into the transhumanist way of thinking this is a book that i think that you're really going to want to read it is not a simple read even though it's not a big book but i think it's worth your time um, I enjoyed it. There are things in here that I had to go back and read up a couple of times. I'll admit, I'm like, okay, now I understand what he's talking about, and then move on. Um, but he does encapsulate some of the Tom concepts that he is discussing periodically throughout the book for that reason, because the author understands that what I am discussing is deep and sometimes going to be a little tricky to deal with. So, kudos on the author, uh, Mr. McKinnon. 
So if you are a transhumanist or you were just interested in the topic of biological enhancement and what our future can, can hold, uh, this is a book I think you have to read. And if for those up there who have been waiting for Blade Runner for their entire lives, it can't get here soon enough.